Hello everyone, Stan from Stan GV Builds, and today I'm going to be talking about part 3 of my SCAR L build series. Um, in this part I'm going to be talking about the barrel assembly and rail extension combination, my bolt and the rest of the upper receiver. So let's get started. So first of all, uh, before we're going to take this uh, receiver apart, I'm going to talk about the top rail, the G36 rail that's fixed on top of it. Um, it's an Aeros SL9 top rail. Um, it's mo been modified to fit on a Picatinny, um, so some drum work has been done. Um, I bought it because I want to use the original SRU top, top rail, uh, yeah. how do you call it, a uh, riser, uh, that went from this side until the end of charging handle, like midway yeah, what, to where I am pointing, but it didn't fit. Um, I wanted to get a longer version, but getting a rail to fit onto the clamps was pretty hard, and those clamps were pretty fragile. I broke two, I broke both of them, to be honest. So I went uh, with the G36 rail, and it ended up beautifully. Um, on the other side, yeah, just the same, but with the screw heads instead of the nuts. So. So let's disassemble a receiver. So disassembling the upper receiver is quite easy to a certain extent. Um, first of all, uh, when the back plate is removed, just remove the recoil rod and then pull the charging handle out. Uh, I'm gonna do that off camera because I need a rubber hammer. So. So, after I've tapped out the charging handle, yes, I have to tap it out because I use a little bit of elastic tape to fix it in place. Um, I place a little piece on, on top of it and then I just squeeze in the charging handle until it's fixed in place. I do this because uh, when you not fix the charging handle in place, it will just twist slightly, but this will cause extra wear and damage onto the upper receiver. So, now that we removed it, we can just pull out the bolt assembly. I will talk about this later. And then we can go up next to removing the front end. Uh, the barrel assembly and rail extension at the same time. So, to do that, we have just have to um, loosen the top screw so we can pop off the front of the rail. And then we have to loosen three screws on both sides, so those two and this one on both sides. So let's get starting on that. That's enough. So, after we've popped out the top rail and screwed out the three screws on both sides, we can now just take the whole assembly and just slide it off. And hinge it, after we slide it forward, just hinge it out of, out of the up receiver. Now we have all parts that I'm going to be talking about. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is the whole this assembly. So. Uh, first of all, before we're uh, gonna m go more in depth into this part, uh, I'm gonna say I'm not gonna remove the rail from the barrel assembly. Just for the reason that I don't want to do everything again uh, for disassembling it. It's quite hard to get the barrel straight onto the end of it. Um, due to some holes that are slightly misaligned, I'm gonna try to explain it later. But I'm not gonna remove it, but first uh, I'm gonna talk about the parts that are inside this hop up unit. So, to start off, we have the, the standard uh, WE hop up unit 
Uh, then add a hopper block, attachment block, center WE as rail, uh, gas block, um, yeah, is a valve that's actually a screwdriver. Um, on top of that, we have a, a RATEC uh, barrel extension. It's a bit hidden inside a bit, uh, but it works quite good, uh, quite well. We have a very small rail extension, and this is to allow uh, to put on the uh, the BNT uh, ASG mock suppressor on it uh, onto a flash hider. Um, without it, it wouldn't fit, and I find that it gives a bit more look to it being tiny bit longer. Um, other than that, we have a giant the Midwest Industries car extension rail. Um, this is quite expensive because it's a real steel rail and getting one in the Benelux, Belgium, Netherlands, Luxembourg is quite hard. Um, we have an attachment piece that's also included with the rail extension. Uh, it allows you to mount rail firmly onto the receiver. And then for the internals, we have a, a, a RATEC inner barrel, a 6.1 inner barrel, uh, 370 millimeters long, and uh, a maple leaf Decepticon 75 degrees hopper prober. You can see there's slight wear on it, but that's not really a big problem. The seal it gives is pretty damn good and will go give no problem whatsoever. So the biggest part of this whole um, front assembly is a real steel rail extension. It works, it's very good, it's very light, um, I'm gonna put the weight on, on the screen, and it works, it wor just looks good on my build in combination with the G36 rail extension. Um, I've had a lot of trouble getting it um, because I live in the Benelux, Belgium, Netherlands, Luxembourg, I had to import it or go through a company that imports it and finding one was quite a hassle until someone pointed out that um, Brownells uh, Germany had one in stock and was able to send it directly to me. So I've done that, I've received one and I was happy. After that the installation went not without its problems. Um, after I installed it I was at that point fine with it, I played the game with it and I remarked that my barrel was pointing like 5 millimeters to the left. So if we have a front view, my barrel was tilted, even uh, all the photos I took, all the video I took, the barrel was tilted 5 millimeters to the left. Um, did ended up um, being solved by a lot of work, I'm speaking 8 hours of work to fit it in decently and properly, but it went very good and um, I'm gonna go over how I installed it properly onto this opportunity, but it will get a bit technically. The first thing to mention are the screws. Um, the screws are quite a hassle in this build. Um, we have those two screws, those are the main parts. Uh, Every screw had its own problem, so we're gonna start with the left one. Um, the first problem is that both screws, uh, compared to the real steel and the WE one, are not spaced the same. Uh, the real steel one has screws spaced, the real steel one has screws spaced out a little bit tighter together than the WE. I'm speaking two or three millimeters. It's not a lot, but it's enough to fuck with you. Um, why? On the front side, first of all, to get to even get the real extension to fit onto the uh, attachment block, we have to cut that space where the part screws in with uh, two or three millimeters down, and both sides have to be uh, shortened two millimeters. So we end up we start with a straight block. We end up with a smaller and. Uh, less uh, narrower block to end with. What did this cause uh, for, for problems? Uh, first of all, the original one has uh, a thread in the top and then a big hole uh, with no threads. The, after you've done the modifications to fit the real seal rail on, um, you've removed 
mostly all of the threads in the top and you're literally left with a big hole where nothing can thread into um, big holes does allow to, ju uh, to just put in the screw without any problem but the bad part is um, you have nothing to thread the screw into so you have no threads at all and you have no room for threads um, I've solved it with just with tension um, I've wedged in uh, while screwing I've wedged in uh, nylon tubing um, the see-through stuff that I've used on my lower and just wedging it in in combination with a careful uh, fitting on the front part I've got it to a point where it will not move whatever you do to it and it's just fixed in place that's why I don't want to remove it because it's a hassle to get this rail on and get it right so yeah from uh, the fun thing of this gun is you can remove everything like a real steel one without any problems so removing the inner barrel and getting to the inner barrel is quite easy and that's very good for me So the other screw, the front one, uh, is a whole other story. Um, you normally have the attachment block of the original one. It's as wide as the front part here. But there are two problems. The original one is that small. The aftermarket one has nubs. Those nubs are not really the problem, but they are extra material that's sticking out. Um, the other thing that I want to mention about it is that you see the area that I grinded down my original those were higher up but uh, they caused problems with my upper receiver with, that, with those high areas I couldn't just slide this piece into my upper receiver that was a problem and I hated it for it um, I ground, ground them down and I could slide them in easily but that mm, the next problem arose the areas underneath the parts that I removed so I first removed this area top then we had the bottom area these were also wider than the WE ones so how did I solve that instead of uh, removing it on the provided piece uh, the steel piece provided with the real steel rail I've just removed them from my upper receiver on both sides I removed two millimeters of material to just slide it in and without flexing my upper receiver for the bolt assembly oh uh, this is quite a story to begin with um, first of all I've started it with uh, this with the original bolt carrier group uh, just uh, the center plastic nozzle um, standard N uh, NPS valve standard top carrier standard uh, bolt carrier and with the alien kit it worked fine um, I had no problems with it with the whole assembly it, I, I had to not change anything but I want something more robust so I've started to experiment I've used both the Ratec top uh, carrier the Ratec bolt carrier the aluminium nozzle um, and so forth even the angry gun uh, recoil and uh, fire rate kit but I've encountered, encountered some problems um, first of all the recoil kit it works very good but I've just recently found out that this is actually a scar hitch kit and I'm quite disappointed by that because the packaging said scar L the persons that said so I sent it to me uh, said that it was a scar L but by my research this whole assembly on the bottom here those four windings of a uh, spring know to me that this is a scar H kit and with that I've destroyed my uh, Ratek lower carrier just because the trigger got the hammer got stuck in front of it and bended uh, the front areas on this, on this area and it also ruined my aluminium nozzle so that was quite a bummer um, if you're gonna use the SCAR H kit in SCAR L yes you can do it 
but you have to set it um, to prove this part the uh, fully forward just to make it function safely and properly so now going to the bolt um the aluminium nozzle that i used the ratic one did give performance but it was leaking all over the place from the first start um with lower pressures lower than uh, 110 psi i've the aluminium nozzle was continuously leaking uh the uh, and and pass uh, valve in the aluminium nozzle was inconsistent as it could be uh, it didn't work properly i got uh, fps fluctuations from how much 10 to 30 fps both directions up and down um, i've got all sorts of problems with cycling due to the NPS, uh, nps uh, valve inconsistency so I had to take another route. Um, while testing those, my carrier broke, so yeah, I couldn't use the origin, uh, the Ratic one. So I started using the original one, and also starting to use the original top carrier. Um, it was recommended by me by Ali and Ashraf to use uh, the parts as light as possible for fast cycling and decent uh, continuous performance, but I. To be honest, I kind of kind of said no, and I wanted to make something unique. I wanted to make and show people that even with your link kit, you can make um, something very smoothly cycling, very smoothly working with heavier aftermarket parts in combination with it. So I've done that. After some testing, I've come uh, broke also the original carrier and a nozzle assembly. So that was fully my fault due to not screwing in both screws very firmly blowing the back piece off of the original top carrier so after that i've uh, used my top carrier ratek top carrier that i already had and i bought myself an angry gun scar h bolt carrier why the scar h um i knew i'm was gonna make uh, a semi only gun so I knew that the full auto sear on the back wasn't needed and the dimensions of the SCAR L and the SCAR H bolt carrier were exactly the same except this nub, this extra nub, this full auto sear on the back. So I knew I could use SCAR H bolt carriers. Um, with the angry gun. Um, bolt carrier I knew I was gonna use a steel one uh, a harder steel one compared to uh, the, uh, the Ratek one um, everyone speaks very good of the Ratek parts um, but some exceptions and I have to comply with those some exceptions um, they make good parts but the ones that are in contact with a lot of other things are very brittle or they are very soft um, they are very soft for steel parts and that doesn't help in a build where you're exceeding a lot of pressure in onto everything else uh, mostly the tin walls were a problem on the original Ratek carrier um, for the nozzle assembly um, I have just went with the original plastic nozzle for the simple reason being that the, plas the original plastic one has uh, a fail point uh, the aluminium, um, if one thing fails in the carrier or the nozzle, one of those will fail. Um, if you use the plastic nozzle, the plastic nozzle will fail. This is easily, easily changeable and will not cost a lot. They are very easily, um, you can get them very easily through a lot of retailers uh, or, or the official one, Kia Airsoft. But um, if you use an aluminium nozzle in the Ratek or the Angry Gun bolt carriers, if something fails, it will it will probably damage both. So also your carrier and your nozzle will be damaged. So that's getting the cost up way higher from the first part. So that's why I'm using a uh, plastic nozzle. And the other reason why I'm using a plastic nozzle is because it flexes. Uh, when you put pressure on it, 
the plastic flexes a little bit and gives just gives a better seal compared to the original ones it's it's something stupid but it works and i with the fps i get i get differences from 2 to 3 fps up and down so 6 fps in total difference for my hottest, hottest shots and my least hottest shots um, internally it's, it's kind of odd but i'm just rocking the standard um standard mps valve i'm uh, i don't use npa in npas valve because even in my testing they are an I, how do you say that? Unconsistent in every way possible. But you will need them if you're gonna run 60 PSI, 60 to 80 PSI, you're gonna need them to just adjust them to the right fine place. If you're running 100 PSI, they are very good and you won't need any problems. Um, even with this, I'm getting 340, uh, 350 FPS consistently without any problems. So these are within my uh, legal limits of my country, so I have no problems with those. Um, if you get a higher FPS rating, use LFG, uh, LF, uh, LFG di discs. Uh, why? If you get higher FPS uh, with just the standard no nozzles, use uh, FG discs. Why? They are more consistent, they will not give cycling problems and they are just better overall for consistency's sake. Um, the NPS is fun if you want an easy and fast way to adjust your uh, gas gun, but if you want a consistent way and you're already HPA tap your gun, get away from the NPS valve and use just a standard valve with an FG disc. It will give more consistency and it will help you a lot. Um, with that, I think I've covered mostly of the internal work that I've done in in this whole build. Um, but there are some things I want to show you um, just for why I think my gun is so consistent in this whole assembly. And yeah, the first part being just the I, the lean kit make uh, using HPA consistent HPA source is a very good option, but the other one uh, is uh, just see uh, the seal between the nozzle and uh, the hop up unit. I just want to show you that because I've got pretty damn good results with those. So now now I'm gonna att just attach everything back together, and I can will show you those. Assembling everything back together. I reassembled whole of the receiver in one part and we I now can show you the seal that I have between the nozzle and the hot chamber. Um, one of the things that I found in a lot of GPBRs is if you want FPS consistency you want to have your nozzle as long as possible in the hop chamber until it releases and comes back into the carrier. So we now have I'm gonna hold it up of 750 gram carrier inside the nozzle. The only thing connecting this and holding this up is the nozzle inside the pop unit. So you can see at this point the nozzle alone, the connection between the nozzle and the hopper chamber is holding the 750 gram bolt carrier. That's one and a half pounds. So that's quite good I presume. So. That's one of the things that I give this thing no crap about is that it's very good sealing and will give very good performance thanks to that.
if I just give it a little flick it will pop out like that um, yeah With this, I want to conclude uh, part three of my SCAR build series. Um, I will have another video just explaining how I assemble everything together. Um, that will be a very short video, but it will help some people um, understand why I had to do some specific things with the hoses to get this thing right. So up until then. Uh, give a like, subscribe, um, if you want more info just send me something through my Facebook page or on my YouTube channel and uh, thanks and bye bye.